Okay, so we we are recording and and welcome everybody and and a special welcome to um to Tim and thank you for for doing this and trying out this format with me. So uh, what we're doing here and it it is a, a podcast format, but it's actually a, a an interview, a, a conversation about uh, that I've named Awakening Talks. Um, about people's spiritual experience and what i'm hoping is that i get to meet a lot of inspiring people in in this and, and hear some some very fascinating stories about their relationship to spirituality so i i hope to to both learn from that and hopefully um others will too so tim thank you so much for for graciously gifting us with your your time and and people probably know you from the the personal sessions we've had that you've been kind enough um to share also so in in that case uh, you're not quite a new face uh, but tell us about uh, yourself and um yeah name age uh, social security number uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> if you would <laughs> yeah well of course yeah pleasure Matt for allowing me to do this. It's uh, the first time that I, someone's interviewed me in terms of uh, spirituality, but I think it's uh, it's a good time to to speak about it. I think um, I mean where to begin really? I've been in the in the healing space, um, or I've delved into the healing space for the last, I guess, five six years. Um, there wasn't necessarily, I would say, a moment that I went into the space. I think it was more so everything converging together, in in uh, in a few years time and in, in terms of a timeline which then resulted in connecting with other healers other channelers people who do all sorts, sorts of different modalities and it's just um organically developed uh since that point i mean in terms of a of a career standpoint i don't necessarily have uh, let's say a business to do with healing or anything like that i mean business development with the with a personal development company but you know, spirituality has always been something that I've always looked to for either solace, guidance or support or even just connection with, with other people. So, yeah, I guess that in a nutshell is uh, basically what it's been about for the last couple of years. That's uh, I think it's it, it's fascinating that that you also say that that. Um... Well, I think there's this joke among uh, channelers and and the like that uh, that half of the clientele are psychologists that are looking for extra answers, right? Uh, so, so that just that that idea that uh, in personal development, um, I, I imagine that your relationship um, to these aspects of reality, even though you don't necessarily address them directly, still uh, helps you kind of navigate that work. Absolutely. I think when it comes to anyone who's in the wellness industry, regardless of what you're doing, you always need you always need a different perspective. And I think if you can add spirituality into your practice or you do it in, inside your work and you mend the two together with what you're doing, then I think it has an enormous effect on, on so many people, even if, let's say, your clientele aren't necessarily spiritual or, let's say, they're not really very much designated to a certain religion, then it, it can work in a lot of different ways where people don't necessarily realize it's happening to them. And then they come to you five, six months down the line and they say, hey, wow, you know, we had this discussion around spirituality and it really changed my connection of X, Y, Z or my connection with my children or my wife or my husband. So it, uh, it has an enormous effect on people who don't necessarily know what you're doing, but still feel the intention. For sure and the, was there a special um, there wasn't a special event or something that transpired in your life that that really drew you into like what drew you into working with the personal development well i mean i've always had an interest in meditation and things like that i think when you when it comes to your career, a lot of people would divide the two. And I think that was similar to me in that I didn't necessarily want an overlap between my spiritual practice and then my career. I wanted to keep it separate. And uh, as the universe would have it, that's just not <laughs> not how it works. Um, both interline in different ways. And uh, realistically, you know, you can't, you can't ignore <laughs> what your intuition is saying or what whatever you're feeling is is suggesting if it's the case where you know you're being nudged towards putting spirituality into your practice 
there is a, a clear reason for that. There's a clear perspective that you can bring to other people that they cannot have uh, if you don't bring that forward. So, um, yeah, I mean, in terms of an interest, it, it's just almost been in my back pocket. It's never really been something that I wanted to bring to the world, so to speak. Um, but it's it's an interesting way for, for you to, and for anyone to, for, to, I guess, like understand how it can mix together with your career. And even if it's the case, let's say where you, um, you're in a very corporate corporate uh, environment and they're not necessarily talking about wellness or spirituality you can still add it in different ways um even in that space which i think is interesting it that really is interesting um <clears throat> that's partially of course something they they talk about the the entities that that you know are the mirroring principle so so the outside reality sort of mirrors our approach and attitude towards it. And, and I do find it interesting uh, also just in, in this work, how when my attitude shifts, so I manage to to sort of surmount something negative or uh, I can all of a sudden see a change and that people also relate to me differently in in the more mundane stuff of, you know, just just planning and, and mapping these things out. So I, I really like I really do see in you even the basics that it is as if when we we change or, or we open up to a like a brighter more uh, more open more healing space it it does seem to open up the the brightest version of whatever reality we are in um but then sometimes of course there are uh, shifts where it also seems that that we then you know move into a, a altered um and also also the understanding of ourselves um, where we irrevocably uh, seem to, um, you know, be drawn somewhere else. Because I know you've also uh, taken quite the, the physical uh, shift um, in, in the last year. Um, and maybe you want to, I don't know if you want to, to share with, with people uh, that you, uh, because you've moved. And, and how has that kind of affected your your spiritual journey? Yeah, so for people who don't, you know, I'm imagining no one knows about this, apart from you, Matt, but um, for people who may want to know about it, I lived in the UK for practically all of my life, um, and I had a long-distance relationship with my partner, who is still my partner, who I live with now in, in Luxembourg. It's been over, over three and a half years where um, this relationship unfolded, and I made the decision, okay, it's time for me to have closer proximity and uh, actually move countries. So in terms of spirituality changing, I wouldn't say that there's much of a difference. I think the only difference that I would say is that if you're absolutely, if your environment is confining or if it's not necessarily allowing you to practice your spirituality in the way that maybe you've envisioned or you've wanted to, then if you can make the leap to either change environments to a different country um, or to just just a different space that you can have longevity and, and vitality in, then it can it can definitely shift the way that you approach spirituality. It can affect the way that you can impact other people with spirituality as well. So I've definitely noticed that you know I was in in a little bit more of a chaotic environment back in the UK. Definitely, when you've moved, you can sense a different sense of calmness. You can sense you can sense a lot of different things <laughs> when you're in a different environment. So I would say, yes, there has been a shift, but not too much. I think, you know, you know, your guides will likely give you subtle hints of where to go, what to explore as me and Matt have figured out along the years. And that will ultimately give you more of an idea of what you can do with, with your life and just what you want to bring out. Yes. Um, because what I, I I sometimes find when being in in strange environments is that there's at least this uh, adaptation phase uh, where you get a a new sense of yourself, a perspective of yourself simply because uh, your environment is so strange uh, that you're sort of experiencing yourself relating to it in in an entirely new um new way. but but we were also talking a little uh, before we we got going here. and it 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 does really seem like you have a, a very um, constructive outlook on uh, on doing things. So you were also relating a little about your your career and and how you you saw that expanding. Um, so do you find that uh, like do you find that that Luxembourg is inviting 
other parts uh, of you to um, to express themselves in the long run. I would say so. I mean, again, I think it relates back to being in a different environment. You you get a different understanding of yourself and with what you want to accomplish. So for me, in terms of spirituality, it's, it's going to be the case where something has to come out of what I'm what I'm doing, whether it's me writing more with spirituality and and getting people aware of what my perspective is or if it's some other type of project with i don't know with you mads or anyone else um i think it yeah just to go back on the environment it allows you to to think differently and act differently and ultimately that's what your guides will enable you to do is to make different decisions and act differently so that you can get to your highest level of consciousness and then then that's that's that you know um yeah it's it, thank you for um, for expressing that, and uh, and and I'm I'm of course steering a little around in in your biography because one thing I'm all, always very interested in both in in you know my own process and in others is where 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 do these inclinations come from, uh, and where do they like where does initiation begin? So do you have any recollections from from childhood of? Of spiritual experiences or of being drawn to you said you've you've always been drawn to meditation is there like how how does it look in 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 the wider biographical perspective yeah i wouldn't like there's a lot of people that i speak to who have maybe near-death experiences or they have uh, maybe a loss of a loved one and then there's there's some type of experience going on there in terms of uh, a, a grieving process and and everything around that for me there, there wasn't anything specific in terms of a a moment or anything like that. I think it was just, it was just more so an inclination. I think it was more so my personality as well. I mean, I wasn't necessarily the, the most outgoing person <laughs> when I was younger. I was a little bit more reserved and shy. So, getting that in, you know, mixing spirituality into a reserved <laughs> young boy, I think it, it it does work very well. I mean, um. I guess there wasn't really a video or anything like that that enabled me to know about meditation. It's just the case of, you know, I think it's, you know, when we, when I think about meditation, it's just the case of you sitting with yourself and, and, and knowing yourself more in, in a, you know, spiritual way. So it came more so naturally than, than anything else, you know, just to sit with yourself, to know yourself, to understand what what it is that your internal dialogue is saying and how you want to react to things or anything like that. So for me, it was more so an, an organic process. Of course, when I moved into teenage years and, and so forth, then, of course, social media was booming during my time. You know, I'm only 24, so, you know, growing up with technology has increased the level of understanding of, you know, what is out there. So, yeah, I think... Um, just you know getting into technology more and growing up with technology it enabled you to and me just to see what is out there and see what other people think and then that is what led me to you and and, and anyone else that i've you know luckily been able to get with over the years oh but that is also remarkable and um, so because i i actually didn't uh, i actually didn't know your uh, your exact uh, age and I think it's it's because you often radiate such a um, there's a solidity uh, to your to your being that's uh, and I assume it works very well in your self help uh, business too. But uh, but you seem like quite quite content. Uh, there's not this feverish striving that I think I associate much with my my own younger years and probably still <laughs> some uh, to some degree with my existence, right? So so I I think it's it's it that's very fascinating. But that were you born in in 1999 then? Correct, yeah. Um, in July, so I'm, I'm a Cancer. If there's any people who are interested in numerology or all that sort of stuff, so <laughs> there um, might be a few, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the if you look at the, my birth chart or human design or whatever you you want to use, then of course there was you know there's there's the linkage between what I've experienced and you know what the what the what the universe says basically about me so yes i think um yeah <laughs> i don't know where to go with that but it is uh it is interesting for sure it it, it i i think it it is and uh and and i of course i don't want to um 
Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it's it's because, of course, Cryon and some of these other entities have also been talking for years and years about uh, like different generations of of star seeds and and so on. And it's, I think it's it's very clear when I relate to your energy that you um, you seem to to come in with a lot of this energy, sort of ready made, and 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 the fact that you, for instance, say that you you have this inclination to meditation because I think for myself and a lot of people I meet exactly it is that uh, that kind of shift into oh dramatic awakenings like things the life isn't working out for me so I I, I have to go into this uh, it's it's very interesting for me that you describe that have you had any do you recall sort of any recollections um as a child or in dream spaces or uh, other things where you've you know felt yeah. the, the presence of of beings or something similar I wouldn't necessarily say so. Like, um, yeah, I mean, there there wasn't any, 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 you know, angel coming into my dreams and saying, "Tell me you have to do this or go and explore that." It never. It. I know there's a lot of people who have those sort of prophetic uh, dreams or they um, see things or anything like that. But for me, it was more so of a, of a I guess, a regular, a regular child uh, who didn't necessarily have any understanding of what the existence of the universe was, you know, all I really cared about was, I guess, just like, like any child, like what's, what's in front of you. Um, I, I don't recall any, like any dream or anything like that. I always remember my dreams being very vivid uh, itself, like in that, you know, I would go throughout the day and I was like, Hey, oh, wow. Okay. So I did actually dream <laughs> that it wasn't actually real. Um, so like there, there were a lot of vivid dreams since I was young, of course, but I don't think any of that really correlated into anything specific in terms of a message or or anything of all that sort of sort. Um, it was only, I guess, it's, you know, over the years, as you get more ingrained in the practice and in your practices, then you may notice certain things. You may notice orbs or anything like that. So I would say, I guess, when I've meditated for, you know, especially with you know, in the teenage years when I've meditated for hours and it's the case where you you may see orbs or, or something like that, but there's never been like a, I guess, a peripheral figure who has come to me and said X, Y, Z, so to speak. So um, I know that's probably what you don't want to hear, Matt, but that's, uh, that's my experience. <laughs> yes, I like, I, I can't, uh, like, I can't fill the, I can't fill the alien tabloids with, uh, with that, that stuff. Uh, give me some, some UFO landings or, or something, Tim. Uh, no, but I, I think I, I, I really love um, to, to hear you share about this and to hear people share about this uh, because it seems that the richness of, of spiritual experience is is perhaps even more vast than than the richness of of sensory experience that we really do approach it in very different ways and and you know i i encounter people where they it, yeah relate alien encounters or sometimes they'll uh, like i'll meet people who've been or oh, accountants or something and they've they've been depressed stressed out get into a meditation practice and then all of a sudden you know ascended masters or something start delivering showing up and delivering like really verbatim very dense content information and i'm very fascinated by that i i don't have that happen either i i kind of have to to really ask them questions to get it out of them more will i'll feel a presence or an outline so i think it it is probably just very very different how we relate to these energies and i actually suspect that you know that the less we the more you experience them uh, as let's say orbs or or energy changes uh, the more they're actually being integrated in your energy body more effortlessly whereas that thing where you experience them as other is is probably also a, a sign that that there is a disconnect. I think for me and many channelers, there is kind of a, a disconnect that makes us prone to to going out of ourselves and, and experiencing things that way. Um, so it also seems like it's it's imminent light, it's it's moving through you. Uh, so sorry I'm I'm talking so much, but I just think it's it's very interesting to to hear um because this meditation practice, you took that up in your your teen years, you you meditated a lot in in those years as well. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it goes towards also, I guess, your personality. I'm I'm more inclined to think that people who are more reserved and introverted would tend to 
of course look look more inwards. I think that's the, I guess the definition of introversion either way. But I think um, it was especially for introverted folks. It's a lot more natural than someone who's you know I don't like to use the terms extroverted and introverted, but I'm just using it for these purposes. But I think it's more of a practice that is more inclined for those sort of people. So I think, um, yeah, I mean, from the ages of, I guess, 14, 15 onwards, it's been it's been an ongoing practice back and forth. I've never, but well, there used to be a lot more structure behind it when I was younger. I think um, in my in my 20s and I guess 30s and 40s, there'll be a little bit less structure. You'll know intuitively when it is that you need to meditate, who you may need to even meditate with and, and so forth. So, yeah, I think... I think that's um that's what I can really say about that. I mean, just to go back into your point of, you know, people who don't necessarily feel guides or they have to ask more of their guides to show something. I think with meditation and stuff, you know, you you do practically instantly feel a change when you do go out of a long meditation. If it's an hour or thirty minutes or so forth, the, the time isn't really relevant to how you know deep you may go, of course. So. When you do get out of a meditation, it, it definitely does shift you. And especially if you've done it in for so long, five, ten, you know, all the masters doing it for 30, 40, 50 years and so forth, then you do feel a shift and you do feel different things moving in your body energetically around you as well. I can undoubtedly say that because that's almost always been the case whenever I've had a long meditation since since 15 years old. So um, I think it's interesting when, you know, someone naturally will have an inclination towards the modality, if it's meditation or or Reiki or work with crystals and so forth, wherever the practice is, um, I think there's, of course, a reason why, you know, your higher self is, is choosing <laughs> to let you do that. Agreed. Um, and, and with that, uh, let, let me ask you, how did you... How did you come across uh, channeling? Because that's that's still kind of a, a subset of you can have a, a a very elaborate spiritual practice with without getting too much into uh, that that part of it. Uh, but 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 what yeah. drew you there, or what did you encounter? I think what, what as, mainly yeah. drew me, yeah, I think at the beginning it was mainly more so around channeled writing, uh, specifically yes. when when people. And, well, they go into a, a different state of of mind, and they inevitably channel uh, written words on a on a piece of paper or, or however they want to do it. So I think once I started to go into meditation deeply, then it went into other modalities of I don't know akashic work or life regression sort of work, um, and then it led to channeling and what it was about. I mean, of course, with the emergence of Bashar and everyone else who are you know just so well renowned um you eventually get to see what channeling is you get to see someone close their eyes and become a completely different person whereas um in any other modality you would you wouldn't necessarily have that unless you ask for it in a, like a very specific way and i guess if you have a like a ritual involved where that that happens but to see someone like Bashar or anyone else just you know close their eyes uh, do something with their hands and and then just speak for hours on end without any you know without any thinking necessarily like you you, you know I think Mads when you channel or anyone else you, you can tell someone's channeling really well because of the fact that there's no there's no stuttering there's no pausing or anything like that it just comes out completely naturally as if you were the one speaking it without a second thought so you know to see those sort of influences come through and then it's the case where I think I made made the decision that wow, like this is definitely something that I have to try or be involved with, because of the fact that it is such a unique way to practice spirituality. Um, it really offers you something completely different, where you're not necessarily too disconnected from your body, but part of you is where it's allowing something completely different to come through and I think that's the biggest fascination with channeling is that you don't know what is going to be channeled even if you're speaking to your guides or manage let's say if you have a little mini 
session with Umblam or something like that, then you, you don't know what he or she or however they want to identify themselves as is going to say and come through. And I think that's probably the most fascinating thing, especially even when me and you, Mads, and I'm sure you speak about this, have had years of channeling sessions together, we still don't know what's going to be said. I, I still don't know what I'm going to be asking uh, because of the words that are coming out. So, it, it, yeah, it is just a, a fascinating uh, modality and it will continue to evolve as, you know, as the world goes on. Yes, because I think it it, it does seem to to evolve with us. And that is uh, as as much as I or as little as I know um, what's going to happen in the channeling sessions, then when we work together, like, like we work together, I do sense that there is a, there's a sort of expansion taking place where it seems to be tapping into information uh, that's, that's deeper because we've, we've somehow managed to, to set a grid uh, together that's able to to receive that um so that that's been very rewarding i, I really feel like we've we've gone deep into some uh, some metaphysical stuff and it's it's often been uh like deep learning experiences for me too because i i never know either uh and i i'm always surprised by exactly the clarity uh, with which these these information seem to be readily available uh, because I think it is something that it it pulls out of a, a clearer substratum of us but but as you point out and I I remember you making that that point in conversation before um that it is their their conversation their way of delivering it is clear and it is uh, channeled and direct and that is fascinating that the speech patterns answer because you you can hear me uh, the gears are grinding and things are resting and and all things and and that's just completely different when it's that energy stream that's that's moving through. I think it's important as well as I, I know there's a lot of people who will have different experiences with with people who are either healers, Reiki healers, or anyone. You know, oftentimes someone would use I don't know five, ten, fifteen different healers at in any given year itself and I think it's important to know you don't necessarily have to do that even if you feel like it's the necessity to you know speak to as many healers as you want or get as many sessions or what, whatever problems that are you're going through and moving towards and moving through I think there's a you know a very big correlation to like what I've experienced with you because of the longevity of it that I've just stuck with one like a, you a specific healer a channeler rather than getting messages from 10 15 different healers and i think that's an important note as well in that if you want to actually cultivate a long lasting relationship with either spirit or people that you know you really want to work with longevity here is it has to be the key in that you know messages may be said two or three times differently and it may be the case for the third one hits you the most so I think that's the most important thing as well for me is that you want to be consistent with at least either one or two people max, in my opinion, either way, for a longer period of time rather than jumping between different healers and channelers every every couple of months. Because I think, as you said, and you'll agree, the synthesis of information completely changes when you work with someone for, for that long of a period of time. It's... um. Yes, please, everybody, listen to uh, listen to Tim and and stick to your your favorite channels. No, I, I'm of course uh, I, I'm of course very glad to uh, to hear uh, hear that because I uh, I think that that is a a point. I yeah, I of course want people to be guided by their intuition in this, and and they may feel, and I think people do feel if they tap in that that this person seems to be uh, the one that somehow offer me uh, the most healing wise or. Um, or in 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 terms of spiritual aid at the moment, and that may of course shift through the seasons of life, uh, but but shopping around does seem to have this um, more superficial and almost it, it can get a little of an entertainment character. I I, I fortunately have um, I think the good turn of of uh, of not having had that experience a lot where people feel like okay so you're the, you're the next one up and let's see what. What you do, but sometimes, for instance, I'll 
I'll experience then that people will bring stuff from one or, or two other channels to this session and kind of expect uh, the entities to be able to then resolve an answer for that. Uh, and that is, I think it, it also kind of, um, to me, questions what is the practice? Because I can't exactly look up then, well, oh, you were talking to that entity and they were saying exactly this and it was through this person and that person was translating the energy that way. I can sort of only tap into what's available in an intuitive way. And that seems to be determined on the situation and on me who's yeah. channeling it and, and a lot of circumstances where it's it's not like looking up a Wikipedia article and then say, well, I had, yeah, I was just reading it from another computer and now you please continue the work, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think um, to add on to that, I mean, I think it just goes back to the synthesis of, of knowledge that, you've been passed as the as the person who's asking asking the questions and, and wanting to help. I think um as you said, there's there's a lot of different healers or practitioners who are human. They may be having a bad day. There may be something else going on that you as the client may not know about itself. So if it's the case where you're saying, hey, look, I've spoken to this channel and this is what they think about my energy. <laughs> what do you think? Or like can you work together with that person to come up with a divine plan, it just isn't going to, I, I don't think that's necessarily the, the the reality speaking here, is that they've tapped into something different that only they know <laughs> about, and they've put that message towards you that you've interpreted. So if it's the case where you're working with multiple different channels, I, I, think, I think it's more appropriate to section those off and have different experiences with each of them instead of mixing together and then messages become conflated and get misinterpreted in, in different ways it it does seem to to sort of uh, accumulate a, a a type of yeah reserve of something that uh, that that needs to then be be resolved i at least like i i've, I've had this experience uh, both working with with people but i think also in in my own process i've been being younger and doing too many psychedelics and actually hoping they would help me and then it's it's very obvious that well if you're not putting in the work we're just gonna tell you that you're not putting in the work and, and then then you can sort of sit around blaming yourself for that and that has also happened in, in some cases you know where people then perhaps resorted too much to to the sessions not as guidance but as solutions um and where you wind up in in something where they'll just repeat that well we we told you to do that and and that and that that would be helpful and you haven't really done that so we can repeat our advice but but we you know we can offer you uh, a, a magic wand and I think that that is like what you're speaking to is also that delicate balance of of guidance and and responsibility that a guide is actually it's a teacher like it's some somebody who who allows you to to work better with the things yourself and i assume in your work that's actually the same right that, that you also have to be wary of of not taking over per people's progress yeah i mean i work with a lot of different um different coaches who are either involved with with some type of mentoring or association with other people so oftentimes you'll hear i guess you would say a coach speaking to a client oh have you done this yet that I told you to do <laughs> no okay go go back and do that so that we could go to the next step so it, it is very similar in terms of what your guides would tell you if it's the case and I've I've definitely had it in, in sessions with you you know one of the one of the, the people who are channeling or are coming through have said you know have you done this yet and I'll be like no I haven't done that yet and then I'll have to do it so <laughs> I, I'll have to do it before I, I go forward into another you know exploration uh, otherwise they're going to say the same thing and I think um, it goes back to, to, to the point that we made earlier in that you know they may say things two or three different times in a different way and it may be the third time that actually gets you to do the thing that you needed to do so um, absolutely I think um, if you're not following the, the, the advice then you know we all have free will so you don't necessarily need to follow what it is that is being channeled so um i think it's just the, the will of the world in a way where you know you, you just have to deal with what's in front of you and the, the guides can only give you ideas and advice on what you could possibly do 
but it doesn't mean the case where you have to do what is being told. It's um you know it's it's it yeah it's just interesting to contemplate because it's it's these uh, also time horizons where they of course are seeing things in a in a wider perspective uh, because I, I remember you we've also talked about um you know coming back to the sessions for you and and going over it and and they're seeing that there is this there seems to be things stored also for for later digestion. So even though it, it might be a session that's a, a, a year and a half old, there might be things that are that are coming to the surface are, are relevant as they're being um, rediscovered. And, and Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the biggest benefits of having um, longevity with a channeler is that you can just go back and pick a, pick a random session that you've had and just click play and then see what messages have come through and see if it resonates with you now and oftentimes as you said you'll pick up things that you didn't pick up before you'll uh, understand like what they're trying to say without them I guess trying to say it in, in, in a way so um, it is definitely interesting when you go back to previous sessions of, of what sort of downloads or anything else comes through and I think that's that one of the biggest benefits at least when it comes to this this sort of work is that you know a message is just not relevant for today it can be relevant for a complete lifetime and you'll you know you have you'll have a different interpretation of a message as you go forward in life and as you're in different different seasons so yeah it is fascinating how how messages become so just so um so interesting and they, they, they become i wouldn't necessarily say advice but they, they just become an extension of an idea or um a message that they've been trying to bring out of you for quite a lot of time and as soon as the dots connect then it's the case where you know things really start moving in the right direction you know I've messaged you before and saying hey look I've I've read you know I've listened to this channeling session and I remember I was talking about this and this is how it connects with now so yeah um yeah I can't recommend <laughs> I can't recommend again this is, this is not a promotion for you man but for anyone I can't recommend enough to have longevity with, with the one person because it you do see such a such a difference thank you um th thank you for saying uh, that sam and, and i'll just take that to uh, I'll, I'll just take that to to heart it's it, it's very appreciated um but i think i i wanted to to ask you uh yeah there's so many questions but um but i i you know, because we've worked with with a few different entities over, um, and shared a good deal of of the sessions. So people may also see that there's been kind of a a panoply of of communications we've done with different things. But but I know I I remember one day where you you uh, where we checked in and and then it and the grace was sort of coming up for you. So can can I ask him? Um, yeah, like the grace and stuff. Like how does it these these fascinations go with you how do they move are there yeah yeah it's, it's so interesting because i think usually the night before a channeling session something will likely come through either if it's through a dream or let's say a meditation that i've done where there's certain points that i want to cover on that on that uh channeling session with room for other other things to come through that aren't planned so there's always some at least a little bit of structure that I have in my mind of what I want to speak about and who may be relevant to it. And I think what's interesting is, I think maybe once you, when you prepare for a channeling session, someone may come through, someone may suggest to you, hey, look, let's, let me speak instead of this person so that, you know, I can get a better answer. So um, it goes both ways in a way, like the, the channeler and the, the person who is the client or the attendee has to, have to come up with something it has to they have to have an inclination of what they want to understand or what they want to evolve in the conversation and then it goes that way so yeah I mean the greys and uh, the Anunnaki and, and people that we've spoken to at the very least have interpreted it is interesting in that that well I mean they have completely different energies but they also have completely different almost sometimes perspectives on the uh, on what it is that maybe you need to do to solve your problems uh, and to solve the, the challenges that you face uh, at, you know, 
right now in front of you. Um, I would, I, I mean, I, the fascination has always been there anyway, in terms of uh, extraterrestrials or anything like that. I mean, I, I mean, we're seeing it now in, in the world. There's so much talk about disclosure needing to be had from the US government and other governments in terms of what is actually out there. And whether you believe it or not is, is for another conversation, but it's the fact that you know, me and you may know that there's something out there, but the larger populace may fail to deny that there is an existence out there that isn't human itself. So I think, you know, just on this, like once disclosures have come out or more news have come out, or I guess what the US government has been doing about <laughs> about um, extraterrestrial activity and stuff like that, then um, we'll see. But I think for channelers and for people in this approach space, it's like, oh, I told you so. And uh, this is what I've experienced. And this is how they've communicated with me. It's just up to the general populace to expand and uh, to understand what's, you know, what is actually out there. So, um, yeah, I think the fascination will still be there. I'm sure we'll, we'll still have sessions on the Anunnaki or anyone else, because I think until there's a, a complete uh, consciousness change over, over what is out there, then these fascinations will continue to come up, even for me, uh, because there's just so much to explore with that. I mean, you're exploring a, a completely different uh, universe or understanding of thinking itself. And I always love the way that they communicate. They may even communicate through color or light or uh, geometry or anything like that. And it's always so interesting to see the connections between that and what they're interpreting versus what you've you know, you yourself are dealing with it at the moment. And you know, speaking of that, that inspiration and and disclosure, um, because something that 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 they often mention is, of course, that they also seem to disseminate and and work with expanding human awareness uh, through uh, popular culture, media, different um, different things. Um, so so thinking about that, uh, th there's of course been. Uh, stuff like Star Trek, where the Arcturians say that 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 they've affected that, but you know Spielberg and uh, Close Encounter and uh, um, E.T. for instance, or or stuff like the Christopher Nolan movies, like things like Interstellar, where he seems to also be sort of in in a in a popular culture medium, mm -hmm. uh, bending people's sense of what reality can be and time loops and and all these strange kind of causalities where where the reverse arrow of time and 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 these things I, I think are to some degree like higher dimensional dissemination that they are ways that that the human collective is is being uh, bent to to receive a lot of of understanding these planes of of reality uh, and and at the same time it, it seems like both things from our own past uh, about like how ancient we are now with discovering all these civilizations in the Amazon and for instance, uh, but also ideas about you know, our connections with and visitations and communications with the stars that, that they're also altering. So it's indeed in exciting times we, we live in, but but say related to, to that, because we talked about spontaneous writing and, and you being fascinated by that. So so is that something you worked with or, or where do you feel inspiration kind of touch you in, in your life? Um, where, where do you kind of feel the, the wind of, of spirit? <laughs> oh, wow, that's a, that's a very loaded question in, in a way, because uh, <laughs> how would I go about answering that? I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, inspiration is such a funny thing in, in that you know likely what inspires you and what you feel motivated to do, yet there's, there's parts of you that may feel inclined to go in a completely different direction that you don't know about or you don't feel comfortable with at all. So, yeah, I mean, when it comes to inspiration, I think it's just a multi-faceted sort of um, exploration that needs to be had um, with that itself. I mean, every every human being wants to, you know, find their, their sense of being and their sense of purpose in life in that, you know, they've tried certain things or maybe things haven't worked out in relationships or, business relations or anything like that and yet somehow you know if we look at history there's there's been people who have had those experiences and yet they, they've come through the other end and they've just completely catapulted their life in, in different ways so 
I think this is why it's it's actually important to <laughs> get a, a a channeled perspective on this. Is that because it you've got so much information around you that the message becomes completely conflated with what to do. And I've definitely felt like in my short lifespan so far, yeah, that you know there's definitely been cases where I've not known what direction to go into. I've not known what inspired route to take. And I think all it takes for you to decide is either another perspective that is in alignment with what you think and, and it's worded in the correct way. And that's what essentially channeling has always done for me. Um, and that's why it's the, I guess, the mode of choice in terms of what to depend on when it comes to you finding the answers that you're looking for. And and that it it's fascinating how when we we lock these things into to into personal spaces and and conversation and and direct words, it it seems to be um, concrete enough to to guide us. That's at least my experience. That I also one of the reasons that I I really enjoy sharing the channelings are that that even though if I just receive these things for myself. I can't really determine where it's it's coming from in the same sense it, it is kind of at the moment where I I feel there's a um there's a type of reality uh, a type of, of of sharing going on uh, that it 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 seems to to become that guiding point um and I I think that is it's it's interesting how it 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 seems to be so locked to the human condition that needs to find uh, external expressions for our inner states and and how we 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 go about that. Um, so how do you see in you know do you have any uh, visions for the for the future, both personal but also you know in 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 like in in the spiritual perspective, speaking of disclosure and do do you have any thoughts about this? And I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I, I don't know myself uh, so. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, if I if I could go into a channel state right now and pick something out of of the ether, then I would do so. But I mean, um, I mean, I th I think just on disclosure and just people understanding what is out there, it, it would eventually come through. I mean, if it's uh, the U.S. government or any other government combining together to create or to release some information or if it's other people who are leaking information or being becoming whistleblowers. And I think, you know, the mo the mode of choice will be decided. And I think in the next couple of years with what goes on and what happens with how much information the public really needs to know. And I think overall, I mean, just in terms of spirituality, I think, I think it's, it's going to become granular in that people are going to decide on what really works for them and stick by it for, a longer period of time um, and I think that's just my personal perspective as well just from speaking to different healers and, and people who have had lots of experiences with different healers is that when you get into the granular details in terms of a, a, a modality or a tradition then things expand in ways which you've never really had before um, and I think that's probably more so what people are going to be gravitated towards is that new experience that is so granular that only they themselves can understand what they've just experienced and how that's going to impact them. So for me, I think the granularity in spirituality is going to go deeper in the next couple of years. But that's just, again, speculation in my end with what I think is going to happen. There may be some new sort of wave with, with, with technology and spirituality that will be introduced that uh, maybe others will just latch onto maybe the public will latch onto and and uh and really delve deeper into that i think it's a, also a fascinating discussion to have with guides and anyone else who comes through around that as well i i absolutely love that term uh like granularity like like that that idea i think is uh it it's it's super precise um because it, there seems to be like an imprecision inherent in in inspirational experience that it, it is overwhelming and and so much of, of what's been been going on in, in new age experience and perhaps especially in the last decades has been very much an explosion of a, a lot of different uh, fairly extreme techniques and all of the sudden like Wim Hof breathing and the esoteric yoga and ayahuasca retreats and, and everything where uh, of course, you can also get into a lot of trouble just by blowing your 
uh, yourself up in in, in those ways. Um, and I I think like like the it's it's probably very precise what you're describing and what the entities have been been talking about that, that this shift from 2020 and then from 2024 we kind of see a a more stable locked in energy. And I I think in in terms of I've just it's um it's an eye opener for me to hear you describe that because I think that's exactly what's happening. Uh, that people will begin to then figure out what works for them and also work with these methods, perhaps with more um a more like a respectful uh, and perhaps also more tempered uh, way. Yeah, I think we can almost finalize the the last topic in terms of that because of the fact that you need to understand the 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 modality that you're that you're working with. There's so many different layers to it that. Uh, a person who has a, a new experience of a let's say channeling for example they're going to experience with that in a year two three or four years that if they you know decide to pick that up and pick something else up <laughs> it's just not going to take place that, that that sense of precision and granularity is the only word that i can describe it Th that can only take place is if you if you have the right of passage in terms of the modality that you're working with. So I think, yeah, um, absolutely. And I hope a lot of people do become granular in, in terms of their focus, because I think that I think personally is the only way that you can you can move forward in, in different ways where you're not necessarily being too overwhelmed with information or as you said, different things popping up here and there and getting too distracted with the, the, the new shiny thing that's, that's happening with, yeah. With, with the new modality that someone's brought out so and uh, and then just because I, I assume it's it's getting to be spring in uh, you're a it little is, further yeah. south yeah uh, yep. like have you like how does it feel just being in a, in an entirely new uh, landscape i assume it must have been like quite quite the shift in, in your reality and, and also moving uh yeah moving together with your partner and, and yeah. everything um yeah i mean luckily it wasn't um wasn't the case where there was dramatic weather changes itself i mean <laughs> europe and the uk have quite quite similar weather <laughs> in terms of the, the hemisphere that i'm in anyway um so yeah there wasn't there wasn't too much of a shift there in terms of uh adaption needed but i think um i think as we spoke about before there's always there's always something new to experience when you go into a different environment whether even if it's the same people that you're experiencing with just the the energy and the climate the the way the leaves even fall on the floor like things you see things a lot differently you pay attention a lot differently when you're in an environment that suits you that suits your energy that suits the season that you're in and um and it's just the case after that, just to continue moving forward and the practice that you've held, the practice that you're looking to explore within that, you know, within that new environment. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would just say that the, the adaption comes slowly is what I've understood anyway, is that you can be in a new environment for a little bit, six months, eight months, or so forth, and the, the change may come on the ninth. <laughs> and you don't you don't really know so um i think yeah as long as people can can keep their granular focus on one certain thing that they're they're comfortable with they they they, they love and they fully want to ingrain then i think that's that's the main thing that i think um personally people people can do for sure that's beautiful tim it's uh i i think i am um... I I uh, I swindled you out of an, an hour of your uh, time here, or, or okay. swindle, swindle. I appreciated us having a an illuminating conversation. I I really enjoyed it. But so, but but is there anything you like you want to uh, to add uh, to to the topic, or, or feel we should should be around that you'd like to to share with people? And no, no pressure. I, yeah, no pressure. But I, I don't think anything really comes to mind. In in all honesty, I think. I think actually what comes to mind now is it's important to know uh, when it when you when you need to shift into something different, like just as we're doing. If we if we need to shift into a different topic, it's important to know when that when that passage of time comes. And I think when people understand spirituality, they think they think it in the case I, I believe anyway 
where you're you're at a point where you you feel like you've you've done everything you can with a with a modality or uh, whatever you're working on, but then at a time you you may just need to shift something very very little in terms of what you're doing to see an even bigger experience come out. So I think yeah that 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 is just why I've loved just focusing only on channeling is because. I may feel like at times, oh, I figured this may be the ego coming into the case as well. But you, you say to yourself, oh, I figured a lot of this thing, this stuff out. There surely isn't another portal. Or there isn't another whole, you know, book that I need to uncover that um, can come through. And uh, the, the the thing that I've always realized is that you're gonna come to a passage, a point where you feel like you've exhausted all the resources and. The things that you've seen and you've embedded into your consciousness but it only takes a tiny shift of i don't know if you would call it your dna or anything else that can just illuminate something completely different that you've never understood and i think that's why the human experience is so interesting is that because we have such a physical uh, domination with what we do it only takes a single swing to uh, to really experience something new Thank you so uh, so much for that, um, and I think that's a, a very good perspective also on what we we've been doing here today. Uh, because of course this has been a kind of a new experiment, but I think for me it's been very invigorating to uh, to also feel that uh, that that I kind of get to um, to experience some some perspectives uh, and and sort of work with with mirroring spirituality in in this uh, in this way. So it's it it's been illuminating, um, Tim, and uh, and I I really love this format. So I I hope um, I hope you'll talk uh, to me in in this way again uh, sometime in in this series of of talks. Maybe next year. Maybe next year when we've done a full year of channeling again, we can see we can see what else comes through and uh, what other topics get get illuminated as well. Yes. But yeah, okay. it's been a pleasure. Thank that, you so much for that, all this, and uh, I hope uh, everyone at least gained uh, some sort of perspective, or didn't mind us speaking for over an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, they will have turned off. Then I, I'm sure I at least really relished it, and I, I am quite sure that that there are uh, others uh, out there. So, so thank you, especially to you, but also for for everyone for for tuning in and and for sharing your positive energy with us uh, here this day through the ethos. Um, so with that, Sam, thank you so much for today, and uh, and have a beautiful um, have a beautiful weekend down there. Thank you, thank you. See you soon.